want to thank Morgan and everybody at Trading Pub. Pleasure to be here today. Now, what's my experience? Well, I'm a full-time professional trader and order flow mentor who's been in the market for about 16 years now. And I tell you what, a good portion of those years were spent running in circles, jumping from one indicator to the next, becoming an expert pretty much in what didn't work before I was able to develop a trading edge. And that trading edge essentially is a true tested and proven methodology for trading order flow. Throughout the years, I've experienced just about everything, both positive and negative, that you can experience as a trader. And I've learned that quality analysis of the market is not what it appears to be. It's much more than just plain vanilla technical analysis. And you know what I've discovered about the markets? Order flow drives price. Change in order flow precedes change in price. So I've built my trading strategies around this. Following the order flow, the buying and selling is coming into the market since this is what drives the market and, and gives us a real-time indication of what the buyers and sellers are doing in the market based on the flow of the orders, the trades. Everything else is just noise. Now, I base every market decision on simple objective rules that quantify supply and demand. In fact, all my trades are based on market-derived information coming from that driving force of the market, order flow. And it's this real-time supply and demand caused by all the buyers and sellers coming into the market, as you'll, you'll see here as we progress, that actually causes price to move. And, and we've learned how to identify clues in the order flow that show up before price actually changes. And you know, from watching order flow closely and the relationship between order flow and, and price, we've learned firsthand that order flow is the fuel that drives price and change in order flow precedes change in price. So what we're doing essentially is looking for exhaustion in the order flow to occur before price actually tops out at a high or the reverse of that bottoms out at a low. Now, our methodology is not about a system. It's about understanding the underlying dynamics of the market. And our guidelines are based on the same forces, the same basic info governing price movement that the pros measure. And the, the benefits of this approach, the way that we trade are many. It, it's a methodology that works in any time frame from intraday trading to swing trading, position trading. The exact same form of analysis and logic applies regardless of the time frame being traded. And it's also an approach that applies to really any liquid transparent market, commodities, currencies, futures. Now, this isn't a sales webinar today, and I'm sure you can, you can tell already that I'm, I'm definitely not a polished webinar presenter. I'm a trader. And our goal here today, and obviously now we're a little bit short on time, but our goal here today is to give you an idea of our trading perspective, how we look at the markets, and how we make logical sense of market structure and supply and demand, and to show you the info that we look at and how we have that info organized in a very simple, very visual manner that enables us to quickly scan the market, in, in our case, for the most part, the S&P market, which we'll talk about in, the future, in, in a few minutes, but really, whatever other markets we might be watching for opportunity as well. And if you, after the webinar here, if, you, if what you've seen and heard, if it makes sense to you, just on a basic level, listen guys, you gotta be realistic. You can't expect to spend 45 minutes in a webinar and, and understand exactly how order flow and how supply and demand works in the market. You know, our goal here is to, to give you a visual on what we're doing, and then if it makes sense to you on a basic level, what we're going to do is invite you to join us in our morning trade room, which at this point is going to be, uh, I believe, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. A couple mornings a week, we run an open room to watch us analyze and trade the S&P market real time and see us practice what we preach. And, and that will also give us an opportunity to go much deeper into exactly what we do with our trading and, and the training process. Okay, plan of action for the webinar today. We're going to talk about uh, a couple different things. Why we, we trade the futures market. The advantage of trading with a, a different perspective. Talk about the smart money versus the weak hands in the market. Very important. You know, we have to talk about why we want to join the smart money and, and how do we make that move to the smart money side. Order flow, supply and demand why they're important. We're going to talk about our trading zones and, and 
the whole idea of what we're trying to do in, in identifying these zones of supply and demand in the market, and, and basically what we're doing is trying to identify that sweet spot where we're looking for a, re a reaction in price. So we'll talk about order flow and supply and demand first, and then we'll, we'll get into speaking a bit about the zones and show you how we use them, and, and most importantly, how they can help you in your trading. But time allowing, we're also going to show, hopefully, We'll show some real-time examples from today as well. But again, guys, you know, hopefully you just get a little taste of, of the way that we trade. Uh, and if it interests you, you can come into the trade room and, and you spend a lot more time. And, and, you know, we're a lot more in our element. I'm in my element with a real-time market, real-time screen showing, um, you know, real-time charts, not trying to uh, to get webinar platforms working and, and screen sh and, uh, you know, slides going the right way. Okay, so why the futures market? Instant X liquidity stability. I mean, you know, we all basically know why we trade the futures. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through that. But, you know, the whole idea of the way that we trade. We trade with a different perspective than what you're used to. But before we talk about that, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about why we actually trade the S&P futures. And, you know, it's the market that we spend the most attention to in the trade room. And yeah, that's not going to work, Morgan, because that's not, that's not uh, the slideshow that I'm showing. So. Uh, now it seems to be working better. Okay, so back to the S&Ps. Very transparent market, very liquid market, very stable for the most part. A lot of commercial smart money participation, which is a very important ingredient for us in the market because those are the, those are the traders that we want to follow in the footsteps of. And that's what we're, we're tracking in the order flow. The other important ingredient in the S&P market, very healthy retail trader participation. And, you know, that's our competition, the weekends. Um, we aren't coming into the market every day trying to go heads up against the smart money. We're looking to join the smart money and take the opposite side of the trades taken by the consistently losing traders. Now, it's a very important distinction that you need to make in the market. You need to become familiar with who's doing business in what areas of the market. And it's something that most – and guess what? If the person on the other side of your trade is a consistently winning trader – if they're part of that 10% group of traders that consistently are profitable, odds are that trade's going to be a loser for you. So again, it's a little bit of a different way of looking at the market, but one that's very important. And, and you know, we get much deeper into the whole idea of looking at the market and thinking about the market is in terms of it being structured as a zero-sum market. Now, in the S&Ps, um. Mostly a high probability day trade, a lot of scalping type of trade sequences, with some minor swing trades mixing along the way. In the FX market, some are more of a multi-day swing trader in the spot currency markets. Also active in other futures markets, CL, the oil market, the 10-year. Um, do some 6E scalping here and there. But again, you know, the time frame isn't important. It's the same methodology that we use to analyze the market action and whatever the market we happen to be trading. So the fact that we do trade with a different perspective, it's a good thing, you know, and what we're going to do here in, in the few minutes that we have remaining here is, is try to show you a little bit of a different side to trading. What we use to trade in the markets with our, our zones, with our rip points in supply and demand principles. You know, there's a lot of ways that people try to trade the markets, the way that we trade in the markets, the way we can sell anything in our everyday lives. And our approach to trading it's similar to something that you're probably pretty good at, buying and selling, anything, but yet differently how the majority of traders buy and sell in the market. So in other words, when, when we're buying and selling, whatever it might be, whether it's a big ticket item, a house, or buying something at the supermarket, we're quantifying supply and demand in the market and looking to buy low and sell high, just like we do in every other part of our life. You know, if you're, if you're looking to buy a house, you're going to look to get an appraisal, so you have a frame of reference. That's what it comes down to, having that frame of reference in the market. Most traders 
are operating in the market without any frame of reference, they have no idea where value is located, where are the, the sweet spots in the market, where are the areas in the market where it makes sense to do business. Simplicity is really the key for us in, in how we, we run our trading business. And our trading and market perspective is reality-based. That is, it's based on the reality of the market. And the reality of the market is trading in its simplest form is about supply and demand, shifts in the supply and demand in the order flow. Nothing less, nothing more. And when your trading strategy is based purely on reality, and again, I'm, I'm talking about the reality of the market, not all reality, based on the real-time order flow in the areas of supply and demand imbalance, then how and why prices move in the market, not that difficult to figure out. So yeah, we, we trade the markets with a whole different perspective than what you're probably used to. But here's the thing, folks. The fact that we trade the markets with a different perspective, that's a good thing because when you consider that 90% of traders lose on a consistent basis, it's a good thing to be doing something different than what they're doing. I mean, that's really just good common sense there. So you're going to probably see some market information that's always been there for you to use, but yet you didn't know existed. And, and listen, I know trying to understand a new method or concept, looking at things in a different manner, can be intimidating initially. I mean, anything new can be uncomfortable at first, but let's be frank. We all know that trading in our comfort zone doesn't always equate to making money. So it's my job to take you out of your comfort zone. So just sit back, take it all in, keep an open mind, and, and I think you'll come to the realization, if not today, we're short on time, if you join us in our trade room, you'll see that it makes a boatload of sense to have tools in your arsenal that will help you effectively make logical sense of the supply and demand force that drives the market. Now, here's a little flow chart here. And, you, you know, the, the, the basis for this image here is people are uncomfortable with, with change. That's what it comes down to. But the fact is, if you're not happy with your trading res results, you have two ways to go. Trading results, fine. Keep doing whatever you're doing. You know, what we what we do and the way that we trade, order form, supply and demand, we can add to the edge you already have. But if you're not happy, you're not satisfied, you're not profitable, if you want to achieve different results, there's two outs. Yes, then it's time for a change. It's time for a shift in your perspective. It's time to think differently about the way that you approach the markets. If not, keep doing whatever you're doing and, and you'll keep getting the same results. But you have to consider whether or not you're open to new ways of trading. And here's the thing. We all want things to get better, but we don't like change. Being honest about how open you are to considering different methods of trading is important. Equally important is to consider how willing you are to get rid of trading beliefs and methods that just aren't working. And, you know, it's not complicated what we do. The way that we trade, it's not rocket science. Anybody here can learn how to think and act correctly in the market. It comes down to changing your thought process. And, you know, trading is hard. You know, we're not going to say that it's not. And more and more traders, we feel like, are starting to wake up and realize this. And they know that they got to take a different approach. They realize that anything that sounds like a too good to be true fairy tale usually is when it comes to trading. You know, we've seen it all. You may have tried some of it, but the positive is that. Now you're smart enough not to be fooled by any of these false promises that are out there. You know, and we've all seen them. I've been there myself. I speak from experience. You know, the, the automatic trading system is going to double your account overnight. Um, you know, instant profits, instant results. It, you're not going to get them, guys. It doesn't exist. It doesn't ex exist out there. So if you spent any time at all in our trade room previously, you, you see that, you know, we take a realistic approach to the markets and trading. And, if this dose of reality that we provide scares off some traders, fine. That, that's that's perfectly fine with us. We'd rather not work with traders who have unrealistic expectations. The traders that think they're going to be doubling their account every other week. The traders that think that they're going to spend an hour or two in a webinar and all of a sudden they're professional traders. I mean, that's, that's borderline offensive. So the good news is for traders who choose to not live in this fairy tale scenario is that they have a legitimate chance of success, perhaps the most legitimate chance they ever had by incorporating order flow and supply and demand into their trading approach. Now, what we do is, is trade with an edge. 
the consistent edge. And what does this mean? Simply that we, we learn how to enter a trade only when we're confident that probability is in our favor. So we're not talking about certainty of outcome. We don't have a crystal ball. But rather knowing the odds with certainty. We're trying to create a synergy, as I'm going to show you, between previous areas of supply and demand in the market, demand as it's unfolding. That's what it comes down to. And, you know, your job as a trader, your goal, should be to identify the high probability, low risk price areas where you want to do business ahead of time and know what you want to see happen in these key areas when price comes into them in order to actually take the trade. So we're looking to create a synergy between previous supply and demand in the market the and the real-time order flow as it's unfolding. When you can accomplish that, you got yourself an edge. And again, are we talking about every trade being a winner, every day being a winning day? No, of course not, guys. That's not trading reality. It's not realistic to look for that. Although, you know, there are people out there, and, and again, I used to be in that boat. Coming into this business and not knowing what I didn't know, I didn't know any better, and I thought that that existed, and, and that was what I was trying to attain. You get to a point where you realize it's about probabilities trading. It's not about these red light, green light systems. So when we talk about smart money, who are we talking about? Because it has different types of, of traders, a lot of different classifications. We're talking about when it comes down to consistently profitable traders. To me, when I say smart money, that's what I'm talking about. I don't care if they're individual traders. I don't care if you're trading size. I don't care if you're trading one lots. If you're consistently profitable, you're smart money. We could be talking about market makers, floor traders, and not all floor traders are profitable. But the element of floor trader that's profitable is smart money. The trader who's consistently able to take advantage of the losing traders. Banks, commercial entities, financial institutions, all can fall under the same term of smart money. And when it comes to the smart money, We've all experienced the effect that they have on the market. You know that feeling as if there were forces in the market controlling which direction it goes? Well, these forces are the smart money. The number one objective of the smart money traders, the market makers, the banks, the commercials, is to hunt your stops and get to your account. They're on the hunt for liquidity, and stops equate to liquidity. Why is it that the few consistently take money from the many in this business. Have you ever stopped to consider why it is that the minority of traders consistently takes advantage of the majority, the retail traders? Well, the market's manipulated, guys. Of course it's manipulated. I'm not in a legal sense, although, of course, if you talk about stuff like inside information, that's down the road of being illegal. But this isn't a gentleman's game. You've got to stop to consider the implications of this. The market's not manipulated for fun. It's manipulated to sucker other traders into bad positions, and it works too, because if it didn't, they'd stop doing it. It's been going on since the beginning of time. The manipulation is always done to benefit someone. Now, why not us? Why not you? Just as we have, you can learn how to identify the manipulation as it's occurring in the form of these stop runs that take place. You could see, as we see every day, how the smart money manipulates the structure of the market to their benefit. What they're doing is just exploiting the weakness of other traders. So our goal is to trade like the smart money. And smart money, what they're doing consistently is pushing the market into favorable areas for them to conduct business. And, and we're probably not going to have enough time today, but we can show how our zones represent these areas of where they're looking to do business. Areas of wholesale value below the market and areas of retail value above the market. But smart money has an understanding of the way the markets operate, and it's not a special understanding of math or secret indicators. They understand that the markets are an auction made up. They know how to push the market into areas where other traders are going to be motivated to take action, which, by the way, is usually going to be the wrong action. Well, that means pushing the market up to highs, like yesterday afternoon. We had some beautiful setups at the highs yesterday. Well, that means stopping your short out at a high, you know, enticing you to be a buyer. 
whether it means getting you to stop your short out because if you're getting stopped out of a short, you're buying, or enticing you to buy the high to get long, only to get trapped when the market starts to sell off. They're doing that in order to create liquidity. They're doing that to take profit on their positions. So our goal is to trade with the smart money. We take the opposite side of the losing trader. You've got to know who's on the other side of your trade. Know the name and, and you know the exact person on the other side of your trade. But what happens is as you become familiar with market structure, you you understand and you realize instantly, you don't have to think about it anymore. You know who's doing business in what areas of the market. You know who's getting trapped, you know who's taking profit, you know who's, in, who's initiating new positions. It becomes pretty apparent. But, you know, I don't want to waste a lot of time here talking about um, how the market is set up as a zero-sum game. We'll, we'll do that more in the trade room. But when it comes down to it, guys, the only way to make money in the market is to take money from other traders. You're not taking money out of some black hole called the market. You're not losing money into the market. If you make money from a trader, if you lose a dollar in the market, guess what? Smart money just took that dollar from you. So the point we're trying to make here is it's important to understand the structure of the market and realize that the market is structured in a certain way and it, it plays out with these patterns over and over and over again. And, and once you learn to look at the market with this perspective, you're able to see it occurring. And instead of being a victim of these stop runs, you learn how to take advantage of it. And, and that's why we stress the absolute importance of order flow. Our order flow methodology allows us to see with a, with a bird's eye view, exactly what the smart money is doing, where where it's going, where they're trying to push the market into, and use that info to our advantage. So let's talk about order flow. What is order flow? Well, simply put, it's the real-time supply and demand caused by all the buyers and sellers coming into the market. Order flow drives price, guys. Change in order flow precedes change in price. That's what it comes down to. Please write that down. And, and hopefully it, this will start to make sense to you on, on at least an elementary basis, a basic basis. And, and, and again, we don't expect you to spend a few minutes here and understand exactly how order flow drives the market. But if you could just stop and think about what's actually driving price. Does it have to do with price-based indicators that have no correlation to the market at all? Does it have to do with Fib numbers or moving averages or RSI? Of course not. It has to do with the buying and selling that's coming. This is the fuel that drives the market. This is the fuel that drives price. Just like gas drives your car, that's the fuel that drives your car. You put your foot on the gas, it goes. You take your foot off the gas, the car is going to come to a stop. Same thing with the market. If the order flow in a certain direction is coming in all to the buy side, of course the market's going to up and try and find sellers. But once that buying alleviates, once that buying exhausts, the market comes to a stop. So you've got to learn to identify where those areas are in the market and how to see that ahead of time, where those potential locations exist. So, you know, the order flow, simply put, shows you the auction in progress. And price-based charts only showing you the result of the auction. So there's, there's, a, there's a big difference between the two. So you have tools in your trading also that are going to enable you to gauge the order flow, the true supply and demand in the market. Not only what's occurring right now, but also the areas where supply and, and demand imbalances took place in the past. So, again, the order flow, basically the measurement of buyers and sellers, aggressive buyers and sellers. So let's start to get through some of this stuff a little bit more quickly so we can start to at least show you what our dashboard looks like and talk a little bit about how we have this information organized and what we're looking at. In the markets, prices are driven down by supply and up by excessive demand. When we talk about supply and demand, supply is selling, resistance, prices are driven down by supply, up by demand, demand is buying. Demand is support. When supply and demand are equal, prices move sideways. Buyers and sellers are kind of fighting for control. 
This is how our supply and demand zones are formed. Give you an example of, of what part of our order flow dashboard looks like. This is actually our buy pressure, sell pressure gauge, and we'll get into this in a second. But on the top here, you see what, what our zones look like. And, and what we'll have on any given day, any given time in the market, any market that we're looking at, we're going to have zones of supply above the market that we're looking to perhaps become interested if the market gets up into these zones. And we have areas of demand in blue below the market. And these zones are created ahead of time. So support where demand is in blue is strong enough to prevent price from declining further. Buyers are becoming more motivated to buy and to sell. As the market declines into one of our demand zones, it becomes support or a barrier, and we expect a reaction to occur, a rip, a reaction in price. So these are what our demand zones look like. Market coming down, and then we'll be looking when the market comes down into a zone, we're also looking to our real-time order flow for confirmation as the market comes into these zones. Supply zones above the market in red have to do with resistance. It's the price level where selling is strong enough to prevent price from rising and buyers become less inclined to buy. So as the market rises into one of our supply zones, we're expecting resistance to form. We're expecting the buying to exhaust itself and selling to start to show up. There are multiple ways to trade our supply and you know the actual setup or, or combination of setups so it will depend on your personal trading goals and personality. The, the way that we approach teaching, we like to approach it from all different angles and, and training and the way that we, we trade in our trading room. We, we like to trade from mostly a conservative approach, but we show both ways. Usually in any given situation in the market, we'll have aggressive ways to enter the market depending on the bias as well as conservative ways to, to enter the market. And it, it, again, it's really a personal preference that is going to depend upon your risk parameters when it comes down to it. You know, there is no blanket right or wrong when it comes to how aggressive or conservative you are in the market. And, and there really is an unlimited number of ways to participate. So the issue for everybody is, is to find a way to personally apply our methodology or any methodology really it's going to work for you and then do it all the time. The purpose of what we do in the trade room, in our training workshops, in our evening edge sessions is to help you better define your personal trade approach by helping you interpret and apply our methodology in a way that's going to work for your trading style. And understanding the guidelines are not difficult. So we have several different types of types of trade classifications. We have uh, four steps in quantifying the order flow. These are all things that we go over in training. And, and you know, again, trying to make things as easy and uncomplicated as as possible. Two different types of trade entries that we have that we could be looking to take. We have an at the edge trade, for instance. Late this afternoon, I was actually a buyer at these lows into the close edge type of trading with the market. In this case, is at the upper end of the range, at the edge, trying to push, hit some stops, force out, squeeze out shorts. And as soon as those shorts are squeezed out, and we're looking at this information on another part of our dashboard as well, but as soon as the market's coming into our supply zone, previous area was selling overcame buying. And then we could pick up in the real-time order flow here, and the other information that we can that we're looking at that the real time buying is down and is picking up. That's the synergy that we're looking for. That's the synergy we're looking for to find a rip. So we're looking for the exhaustion of the buying as the market's coming up into the zone. Stops getting hit, smart money pushing the market up here. A couple different reasons. Why are they pushing the market up? Two main reasons why the smart money is looking to do that. You know, they're looking to hit stops, they're looking to find liquidity. But Number one, either they're looking to take profit on longs, and if you're, you're long a bunch of 
you need to find liquidity in order to take profit. You can't just step back into the market with thousands of contracts in a flat market because you're going to drive price against yourself. So they're find, trying to find those stops. So they're pushing the market up to take profit into the stops. The other reason that they're trying to push the market up here is to get favorable location to put on inventory for new shorts. In either case, they're trying to push the market up into an area where they're looking to sell. Trade entry two, again, what we call an at-the-edge trade. And again, market kind of at the edge of the current range. And it's relative to the time frame that you're, you're looking at. But this is more of a conservative type of entry. And we had good examples of this. In fact, if you go to our blog on the website, orderflowedge.com, you'll see a couple of, of videos. I think the video from yesterday afternoon laid out a nice value transition short trade at the highs. This happens to be at the lower. But, you know, like I said before, there's, there's always a couple of different ways to enter a, a given trade. You know, we could have two traders here with the same bias looking to get long here based on order flow information, based on the context of the situation. But yet you have a conservative trader who's waiting for more information. The aggressive trader might be willing to start probing in here on the vertical development to the downside. But we'll have conservative traders that want to wait for the, what we call this value transition, wait for the buy response, and then look for clues on the downtick after the market kind of bottoms out. Now, the trade this afternoon I took into the cash close a little bit after, as the market's selling off, very aggressive. Not only the trade itself, but the time of the day at the end of the day. But waiting for, for, for confirmation, I'm waiting for clues to set up. So it's aggressive in that we're, we're stepping in front of the vertical development, and we could look for a more conservative type of trade entry. But then again, it's not blindly aggressive. It's aggressive to a certain degree, but yet we still have confirmation that we're looking for in the order flow. Trade entry three is is more of a inside out type of trade. The edge of the range looking for the market to come back in. This is what we call an inside out type of trade, where the market sells off, comes back into the middle of the range, a continuation or trading with the trend type of trade. And, and trend is relative to the time frame that you're looking at. You know, I could show you one time frame where trend shows you one thing, you look at another time frame, then you get a, a completely different perspective. So trend is relative. But in this case, it would be an inside out trade looking to hop on this down move, this down auction, uptick into a zone. Uh, in this case, we have a little bit of divergence. And, and you know, we're, we're taking this out of context. We don't have all the information that we would normally look at here. But I'm just trying to give you some couple of quick visuals here. Now, what we do. In, in the way that we trade, you know, our unique approach is is really based on three basic steps. Before I start to explain exactly what we're looking at, and this is this is the long that we took late in the day here as the market was coming into a zone. And guys, these levels here were actually based on, on supply and demand conditions that took place the last time the market was here. And that, if you have to look back in the charts, the last time the market was here was, I believe, in early August. But we had this 72 level pegged. In fact, we talked about it in our trade room earlier today, hours ago, that we would be looking at the 72 level as, as good aggressive trade entry. Now, I, I got on a minimum position here. It was just a quick scalp trade. But it was something that was planned out way in advance. Already had this, this area pegged as, as sort of our sweet spot. Didn't get a fill. We didn't even come all the way down into the zone here. We started to fill out some of what we call our unfinished business. But all right, let's talk about our three steps here. Three-step process. Number one, where to enter. We identify the sweet spot, guys, meaning the areas of price where it makes sense to do business in the market. And that's what our zones represent to us. We're, we're continually updating our zones throughout the day. We update them first first thing in the morning when we get into the office, update the overnight zones, see what zones were taken out, see what new zones were formed in the market. Then we create our morning market map. And that's something we post into our members' chat room every day just before the open of the regular trading hour session. Um, so step one is identifying the sweet spot. The locations in the market where we're looking for tradable reps, reactions in price. Step two is when to enter. So step one is where to enter. Step two, when to enter. We determine that by reading the real-time order flow. So yeah, the market comes into a certain area, but we're still looking at the real-time order flow for clues. 
confirmation for trade entry and better entry timing. Step three, how to manage the trade once we get in. Well, we're using the real-time order flow information to effectively manage our trade as it's developing for correct position sizing, profit targets, stop management. This is how we manage our risk, guys. When we get into a trade, we don't just stick our head in the sand and, and put our set stop and put our set profit target. We're actually managing the trade based on the same information that we've used to get us into the trade. We're continuing to watch the real-time overflow. Now, as far as our dashboard here, we have three charts, charts one, two, and three. And I'm going to try and get through this real quick. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to have questions here that we're not going to have, have uh, time for. So again, guys, anybody... We'll have a much more time in our room to answer any questions come come Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll also you'll also be able to see us apply this to you know the market in real time rather than looking at after the fact charts, which uh, I'm not a big fan of doing. But as far as the dashboard here, you know, we'll talk more about what information is actually feeding into here. But we have charts one, two, and three. Charts on the top of charts one, two, and three here, we have price. The bottom of charts one, two, and three, we're looking at order flow, guys. This is not based on price. This is based on the order flow coming into the market. And what I've done here, I'm, I'm a very visual person. I like to keep things simple. What I did was take what I found to be the most important and relevant order flow information and organize this info in a way that made it easy to identify, You know, made it easy to read and scan for opportunity. And I tell you what, when you have a simple visual way to dissect the real-time order flow coming into the market, your job as a trader becomes a lot easier. And what you're left with is something that gives you real actionable trading signals and solutions. So for us, again, it comes back to creating a frame of reference. And this whole dashboard, as we call it here, is our frame of reference. It's based on the time frame that we're, we're trading on. We're scalping. We're intraday trading. We, could, we have these set up for whatever different markets that we trade whether it's other futures or, or the Forex markets on higher time frames. You know, you see little intraday zones here that when I'm trading the Forex on a much higher time frame, I'm not looking at intraday zones. You know, I could care less about these little zones. What I'm looking at is zones that are based on daily and weekly time frames when I'm, when I'm looking at the Forex. But, you know, everything is relative. Again, whether you're swing trading, position trading, scalping, you got to create, create a frame of reference. How could you hope to do business in the market if you don't have a frame of reference? Because... These zones on market map is showing us the right places to do business, the areas that represent good value. And again, our goal ultimately identify the sweet spot and then read the real time order flow to create that synergy. So it's not just that the market's coming into a zone, it's the market coming into a zone and showing real time confirmation in the order flow. If you, if you stop and think about the fact that order flow is, is truly the fuel that drives price, and hopefully it, it makes sense that you should be paying attention to what the order flow is doing. And what we're doing here essentially is looking for exhaustion in the order flow to occur before price actually tops out or before price actually bottoms out at a low. So it's critical to understand that exhaustion in order flow occurs before exhaustion in price because if you understand that, it should make sense that you, you need to watch the order flow closely for clues. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways that people look at order flow. Um, you know, the way that we do it, it's not the end all and be all. It, it's something that I've found that I've put together over trial and error. And again, for me, it comes down to keeping things very visual. I don't want to have to do math. I don't like looking at time and sales. I'm not looking at the dome for clues. I'm not looking at footprint charts. The information feeding into our dashboard is basically the same information, but it's just organized in a little bit of a different fashion. That's what it comes down to. We've, we've taken the most important relevant order flow information and, and just organized it in a way that makes it easier for us to read. And so we've, we've gone over our zones. I don't want to take too much more time going over the zones, but the zones get transposed onto chart number two here. On the bottom of chart two here is what we have called our buy pressure, sell pressure gauge. And what we're doing here, guys, in this study here, is looking at the momentum of the order flow as it's coming in. And the difference between looking at the momentum of the order flow and the momentum of price is that the momentum of price can't be calculated 
until after there's already been a change in price. So in other words, the, the output is always lagging changes in price. So it makes a lot more sense to calculate changes in the momentum of the factors that change price, right? The order flow. We shouldn't be looking at price. We're looking at the changes in order flow momentum that occur before price occurs. By doing this, it's giving us a heads up. In a nutshell, really, it, it, using the order flow momentum information gives us an opportunity to glimpse into changes in price before price actually changes, as opposed to using standard momentum-based indicators. So when we see order flow momentum peel away, and we're not really seeing any great examples of it here. I mean, here it's a little bit subtle, but here on this on this downtick, and, and this doesn't change after the fact, guys, like momentum, price-based momentum indicators. This is what we see as it's occurring. So it's not like after the fact it looks different. Market sells off. There's a lot of stops getting hit. We already see here, in fact, and this is, this is what perked my interest here. We already had this level packed, pegged as, as a spot that represents good value. Market selling off into our zone, into our area here of demand. And we already see on a very micro level here that the order flow is not confirming this down tick to 73. Then we tick down even further, and the order flow doesn't even turn around. In fact, the momentum of the order flow is heading up. It's telling us, and we, we can see this on all the stuff that we look at too, it's telling us that the selling is exhausted. It doesn't mean price can't still have a little bit of, of overrun. It's the same thing in your car. If you take your foot off the gas, yeah, the car might still go a little bit, but it's going to come to a stop. Now take it one step further. If you take your foot off the, off the gas and now your, your car comes into a barrier, it's going to stop even quicker, right? And that's what our zones are. These zones, which again are based on previous areas of supply and demand imbalance, represent barriers of orders in the market. This represents a barrier of buy orders. So as the market's running out of sell pressure, it's getting exhausted, comes into a barrier where previously buying overcame selling, and now real time we're seeing the buying overcome selling again. Does that mean the market can't keep going here? No, of course not. Anything can happen at any time, but we're talking about probabilities. We're talking about identifying situations in the market that we know from experience from watching equate to opportunity, equate to situations where we have the odds in our favor. So in other words, we have the odds in our favor here that the market's going to react. We're not predicting, we're not saying, hey, this is going to be the low of the day, we're going to rally 20 points, we're going to rally two points. We have no way of knowing that, guys. Anything can happen at any time. But what we're doing here is, is looking for a rip. And we got one. We actually have another chance here to add into and again, I, I got filled on a minimum position here. I think I was trying to get filled on three or four here at the end of the day, and I think I got filled on just one. And I, I wasn't looking to be aggressive, you know. So that's the buy pressure, sell pressure gauge. In fact, let me see if I think we might have had some clearer examples a little bit earlier. Now we walked up in the trade room. And this is a good example. And again, these zones, you know, we could have had a zone here earlier, but if the market winds up breaking the zone, we erase it. It's a thing in the past. So you could see the kind of divergence that we look for. It's a little bit more obvious than the subtle divergence that I just showed you. But what this is telling us that the market makes this new low on less selling than buying. And as long as we have a zone here, um, maybe we're seeing something here in the order flow, the real time order flow, further confirm to further stack the odds in our favor. But this represents opportunity to us. And, you know, we're also using this information, again, an example of how we would use this information to manage a trade. If we got short on this uptick, and now the market's selling off, making a new low, and we're, going, we're hoping for lower prices, but now we're coming into a zone here. Now we're showing less sell pressure. Hey, it makes sense to be a buyer here. Whether you're buying to take profit on your short that you put on up here, or you're buying to get long, it makes no difference. It's still a spot where it makes sense to be a buyer. Another example up here. The arrows is something we call the order flow tilt, something that gives us a uh, real-time alert. It's not a trade signal, guys. It's, it's just another thing. We'll talk about it in the trade room, but it actually pops up on our screen and tells us when there's more buying coming in at a low and more selling coming in on a, on a swing high. And we're, Again, we're using that as a further piece of confirmation, a further way to stack the odds in our favor. Back to the end of the day here. Um, Let's talk about charts one and three now. That's chart two. Charts one and three showing us the same basic information, just on a different time frame. 
And this is what we call our background. This gives us our higher time frame perspective. Usually on the background, we're looking at anywhere from the last week to two weeks. This is what we call our foreground. This is the shorter time frame perspective here. So same information, just on different time frames. Two very important pieces of information that we get from this chart here. And again, we'll go, we'll go into deeper into this on, on Tuesday morning in the trade room. But we're looking for two pieces of information. Number one is commitment of smart money traders. So in other words, let me see if I can find a quick example. Well, here's an example on, on the higher time frame. Um, we get oppressed to new highs here. And, and this came in yesterday, overnight, yesterday morning. And yet we have short stake committed to the inventory. I'm not, I don't have time to explain exactly what that means or what we're looking for. But basically, in a nutshell, what, what, what it represents position. So in other words, they're short from these levels. So they're short from 1430s. They say, you know, the markets sell off, come back up the next day, 1430 and beyond. And they're staying committed to their positions. That's important information for us because the market's running out of juice. If shorts aren't covering on these highs, who's going to be buying these new highs? Right? Did smart money just wake up and say, oh, my God, we're breaking yesterday's highs. Let's get long. No, heck no. If, if, not to say that they can't be bullish here, but if they are, they're not looking to buy new highs. Unless there's some type of news, unexpected news coming out or, or conditions have changed drastically, they look to buy pullbacks. If they're bullish here, guess what? They're buying here. And on the run-up, they're using this run-up to either get short or take profit on longs. They're not looking to, to buy here. So who's buying up here? If shorts aren't buying and not covering positions, well, you have retail traders getting trapped up here. But once that buying exhausts, the market's got nowhere to go except down. And that's what we see after effect of that longer time frame commitment. So we pick up on higher time frame commitment. At the same time, we can also pick up on short time frame commitment. In fact, we were picking up on that on, on upticks here. In fact, we, I think we put a post on our blog today. Today's post actually talked about seeing commitment. We were picking up on commitment of shorts on upticks. And that's, you know, we had a, a pretty funny market in here today, rotational, and, and just staying in this area on lows for the longest time. And what kept happening, we were talking about the market would down tick to make a new low maybe by a tick or two. And what was happening is, New longs that came in would keep getting squeezed out. And as soon as they were done getting squeezed out, there was no more selling here. The market would uptick, but on the uptick, shorts who got short up in here, smart money, would stay committed. So it led to a very rotational market. It kept playing out over and over again. The market would sell off, make a new low by a couple ticks. Based on longs liquidating, no more selling coming in. Buyers would start to step up. Shorts would cover a little bit. Now on the, on the uptick, Shorts who were short from here previously would stay committed on the uptick. We kept seeing that over and over again. And finally, once the cash market started running some more intensive sell programs past noon, 1230, that's when the market was finally able to, to squeeze a little bit more to the downside here. So the other important piece of information that we're picking up on this chart here, we'll talk about, and then we'll see if there's any questions, and then we'll... Uh, We'll see everybody in our trade room on Tuesday. But the other important piece of information here is are these inventory levels. Um, real quick, these inventory levels, and we can't get into explaining what they are, but they're levels where basically we expect exhaustion to come into the order flow. So again, it's just another clue that we're looking for. We're looking to pinpoint where this exhaustion is coming in. Stops are getting hit. Where do we expect that stop run to exhaust itself? That's what it comes down to. All right, good stuff, guys. Again, sorry for all the uh, technical mishaps again. Um, in our, our trade room, we use uh, GoToMeeting. So combination of me not being familiar with Omnovia. Uh, I don't know what the heck happened with my mic earlier. But uh, anyway, we got through it. Any questions that we don't get to here today? We have a few minutes to answer some questions. We'll get to what we can. Anything that we don't get to, feel free to email Casey. Casey at orderflowedge.com or me, myself, Thomas at orderflowedge.com. Hit that link there for a access pass to our trade room come Tuesday morning. Let me scroll back a little bit here on some of these questions, see what I can see here. And then we're going to wrap it up because I know we're, we're over time here.
He's got a lot of audio comments. I hope uh, I hope it wasn't on on my end. Uh, Michael, can you explain the last example of trapping traders at the top again? I, I unfortunately didn't see exactly when you put that question in, but believe me when I tell you, we we, we talk about that nonstop in the trade room every day, and and not only that, you know, we're going to be talking about stuff live as it's happening. We'll talk talk about stuff before it happens. We'll talk about what we're, what we're looking for. We're talking about what areas we're looking for these things to occur in, and then as we see longs getting trapped at highs or shorts getting trapped at lows you know you got to think about again it comes down to who's doing business in what areas of the market right and if you're looking at an area like this what do you think happened down here guys was smart money selling these lows late in the day or actually you think smart money's coming in here and saying oh my god here we are at the end of the day we're, we're breaking 75 74 we got to start to get short and having this thing no heck no they're already short they're trying to push the market down into an area that represents value wholesale value Become buyers and do what? Well, they want to buy back profitable shorts, and they want to buy to initiate longs, like like we did, right? So who's selling down here? You have to think about who's doing business in what areas of the market. So if the smart money is concentrating on looking for spots to be a buyer here, who's selling here? Well, there's two elements of traders that are selling here. Number one is longs that don't want to be long anymore, and, and we wiped out most of the long inventory, so a lot of the selling here was coming from shorts, right? So what happened to anybody that sold in here to initiate short positions? They get stopped out. They got trapped. Right? And, and I know we've all been in that boat a million times. You know, more often than not, when the market makes a new high or a new low, especially if it's coming into a supply zone at highs, previous area where selling overcame buying, or a demand zone at lows, an area where buying overcame selling, you're going to see this type of reaction because we know who's doing business there. It's the retail traders that are selling here that get trapped. As soon as the uptick occurs, now they become part of the buying that drives this market up. You've got to think in terms of who's trapped in a certain area, who's looking to do business, and, and what they're looking to do in certain areas in the market. And again, it, it becomes second nature. Are the supply and demand zones leading or lagging? 100% uh, leading, Jeff. There's two ways that we do that with the zones. First off, we, we train everybody, we teach everybody, we review it every single day throughout the day how to draw the zones. We have our own little proprietary kind of method in how we identify these areas in the market. And they're, they're very, you know, we're not looking for accuracy to the tip, guys. We're looking for areas in the market that represent good spots to do business, and, and they do an excellent job of doing that. And if you spend just a little bit of time in our room ahead of time, you'll see the zones formed. In fact, if you go to a blog again, I don't mean it's I don't mean to keep shamelessly plugging the blog, but if you go to the blog today, you'll see my morning video, and you'll see the zones that were on there. We talked about stuff ahead of time. In fact, any videos that you see from us, you'll see zones on there. And when you come into the morning room, we tell everybody as the morning room ends, you're leaving right down where the zones are. You can see how the market reacts to them throughout the day. They're there ahead of time. You know, they're forming throughout the day. So as a new zone forms and an old zone gets taken out, we, we do that real time. Um, but another thing that, we're, that we've just released is called auto zones, which as I form the zones on my charts, anybody who is a member actually gets their zones on their charts will automatically update according to what I'm doing on my charts. So when I update within a couple seconds, our servers send out the updated zones to your charts. Sierra Charts picks it up on your end, and we also work with NinjaTrader as well, and we'll automatically update the zones. So, you know, is it absolutely necessary? No, but it's a good tool for a couple of different reasons. I'm one, if you're learning, you want to keep comparing your zones to my zones, excellent tool for that. Or if you're a trader who's trading multiple markets and you don't have time to sit there and keep forming zones throughout the day for multiple markets, it gets hard. It gets hard for me, too. You know, if I'm that's why I can't scalp multiple markets at once. I'm trying to trade on different time frames. You know, I can't sit here and, and form multiple, you know, uh, intraday zones on multiple markets at once. It's hard. Uh, is order flow just a momentum or volume? 
Order flow is is the sum, the net sum of the buying and selling that's coming into the market. So it's it's I wouldn't say it's the momentum of the volume. It's the true buying and selling that's coming into the into the market. Now our BSP, what we're doing here is measuring the momentum of the volume. But what we're doing here is smoothing it out. So we're actually following the buying and selling pressure, the order flow over a certain period of bars, and smoothing it out. And that kind of shows us the momentum. But here and here, we're actually watching the direct order flow. We'll see this. This is cumulative. It's going up. As there's aggressive buying going on, people hitting the offer, it's going to go up. As there's aggressive selling coming into the market, people hitting the bid, this is going to go down. So again, guys, it's, it's different than what you're used to looking at, I'm sure. It probably looks cleaner than most people's charts, you know, and, and again, I've been there. My, my charts used to look like a bowl of spaghetti, but this is it, you know. It's not a lot of different information to look at. It's just different. It's just a shift of your focus is what it comes down to. Um, do we expect more selling pressure tomorrow? You know, listen, the last thing that I do is predict. You're never going to hear me predicting either in the room in the morning or you know, in our trade room, what we do, we come at it from a different end, guys. We are looking to identify and create these if-then scenarios ahead of time. So if the market comes up into an area where we're interested in becoming a seller, it comes up into an area where we already have pegged as an area of retail value and we have confirmation in the order flow, then we're going to look to become a seller. If the market's selling off into an area where we have a demand zone and the real-time order flow is giving us clues, and, and again, we'll get further into what those clues are, we're going to look to be a seller, a buyer. So we'll create if-then scenarios. Um, as far as what I expect tomorrow, I can tell you what I see in the order flow is that there's not a lot of, of long inventory in this market, guys. And, and again, you have to take a step back and think about what long inventory represents to a market. It represents a lot of potential supply, right? Because if you have a lot of longs in the market and the market starts to go lower, what do they have to do? They have to sell to get out of the long. So that adds fuel to the down move, right? So right now we're, we're pretty much void of long inventory. We have very little bit of long inventory in the market. Doesn't mean the market can't go lower, but it actually winds up strengthening the market. And the market's come a pretty fair distance here. What do, what do, what do we come uh, 60, 70 points in the last two days? You know, we're short-term when we're done. So we're going to be looking again for longs. I, most of my trades, the majority of my personal trades today went to the long side. And uh, it was a good day for me. But, you know, there's just, there's no use in predicting, guys. I, I you know, I realized that a long time ago. With, with what I know now, even it's, it's more obvious. It's ridiculous to assume that you know where the market's going to go to. You know, that's just an ego trip. You know, price goes where it goes. The market goes where it goes. You can't predict prices. You can watch them. You can watch the information that the market's giving to you and use them to your advantage. That's what the pros do. But we do the opposite of predicting. Let the market move. Let the market move into an area that represents opportunity. Then you look to take a trade. So if the market's stuck in a zone going back and forth, don't, you know, flip a coin. Don't try and predict where it's going to go. There's no need to do that. The market will give you opportunity. Let the market speak. Let it drive into an area. Let it show you clues where you have the odds stacked in your favor. That's what it comes down to. Uh, Greg, yeah, we trade gold. We have members in our room that actually trade gold. We have members in our room that, that we have uh, pretty much all different markets being traded. But again, it's a personal preference. You know, we have traders from all around the world, different time frames. We have traders trading the DAX and stuff overseas. We have, uh, you know, the, the, the market we pay the most attention to are the S&Ps, but I also trade the 10 years. I trade gold, uh, crude. Don't really trade any other um, index futures because the S&P pretty much has it covered there. And I do a lot of currency trading. But we have members in our room that trade um, Matty Gas. They trade gold, silver. Uh, live cattle. So again, the, the market is an important. It's it's learning how to do it. We teach it on the S and P's. Once you learn it, you can take it and apply it to any market. That's what it comes down to. All right, guys. I think I've gone over far enough here. Yeah, Harry. Thank you, guys. And again, I apologize. I'm not I'm not a tech guy. I don't know. 
Uh, I can't even begin to explain what happened with my microphone. I have a really good microphone that, that I use for the trade room every day. It's USB. And uh, it works great every day. I don't know why it crapped out on me earlier. All right. All right, good stuff. Can you we'll send out some more basic information? Go ahead, Morgan. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Thomas. Uh, again, outstanding job. I'm, I'm sorry for the tech issues, but again, we appreciate you uh, sticking with it and doing a great job. I told everybody that if they were just patient, it would be worth it, and I think everybody that stuck around would say it definitely was. So, uh, guys, we did record today's event. We'll get Good a copy stuff. out to everyone, hopefully tomorrow. And then uh, Thomas and Casey were kind enough to offer a free trial if you guys want to just watch them do this in a live market. And I put that link in there. And uh, you can go to that. And then I think Casey put his email in earlier in case you had any other questions uh, following the presentation. But, you know, go check them out live. That's the best thing to do is, is you know, you guys heard some excellent presentation, an excellent uh, educational presentation today. And, and you have the opportunity now to go hear them in a live market. So I uh, look forward to you doing that. And we'd love to hear your feedback on it as well once you get a chance to uh, check uh, Casey and Thomas out. And we look forward to having them back on the Trading Pub very soon. Thanks, everyone. Hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you, guys. Take care.